This was a place where religious ceremonies had been held for thousands of years. We could feel this connection between us and this place. There's just this, this weight of history that, that, you, that you feel. I think just being on the site itself was more important than anything. The things that you find that might be a particular interest, we could just pull them out and pass. Whenever I go there, it's a special feeling. I don't know if it's because I know it's where we're coming from. And if I didn't know it, would I still have that same feeling? Mm -hmm. I think I would, because it's a special place. This type of point dates most likely to around 1200 to 1600 AD. We're looking at where Wacomico's uh, primary collection, the excavated materials from the research taking place from uh, the initial survey uh, all the way through until the final season of field excavation. This dates back to around 6,500 BC. Wow. Back when I was doing my PhD research, I was studying the Powhatan and how they developed into a chiefdom. And it was clear that where Wacomico was located at Purton Bay. Where in Purton Bay, we were not certain. Finally, in 2001, December of that year, Dave Brown and Thane Harpole gave me a call and said that they had met with Bob and Lynn Ripley and that Lynn had a very remarkable archeological collection and would like me to see it. This is a really nice arrowhead. This is another unique one. This is the pipe stem made for a very, very prominent person in the tribe, probably a chief. Where Wacomico had been found, it was right where the historical account said it should be. What if we didn't have any archaeology at Where Wacomico? We'd rely predominantly on the historical documents that survived, but you're still looking through someone else's eyes that were not Virginia Indians. You're still just left with John Smith's adventure. It's just an incomplete picture that leaves us very unsatisfied. It's true, Werewolf Comico is the only place where John Smith met Pocahontas and Powhatan. It's a remarkably important historical site. But Native Americans have been living in Virginia for well over 15,000 years. And you have Werewolf Comico as the capital of the Powhatan chiefdom occurring right before European contact. It was a thriving people here. Uh, they had a, a different way of life. Uh, they were surviving, and they helped the early settlers. They helped them survive. For me, this contemporary aspect of it, and having Native people at the table to tell our story, was extremely important. My grandfather was mad upon I. Yeah. A lot of Native people were trained as archaeologists and had a very active role in the excavations, too. So their input has been valued at every step of the way. I mean, how many people get to say that they are researching, excavating where their ancestors live? And not just any ancestor, you know, Wahan Seneca, better known as Chief Powhatan, lived here, and the paramount leaders before him. So many of the archaeologists and anthropologists that have studied us over the years you know, we give them oral history and they just pay no attention to it because it didn't come from someone with a PhD. And so now they're learning that the traditional people know more than they know because they understood their culture. It's like if I told you my story, it would sound a whole lot better than if my wife told it. She's going to be more truthful about it. I'm going to try to make Jerry look as good as I can and I'm going to leave out the bad parts. And people will say, well, I had no idea he was that hard to live with, you know. It's, and I look at our story, uh, you know, John Smith, when he tells a story, it's going to be in his favor. But I think archaeology, that's one thing. I think that we'll find out a lot of truth there. I'm hoping for the archaeology to tell a story, piecing together those artifacts, the ruins that they find buried in the ground, to piece together a story of what life was like for those Indians back in that time period. 
I can remember in one of our first meetings, we asked them, what would you like to get out of the site? They said, we're more interested in what preceded Powhatan and Pocahontas. And that guided, in many ways, the investigations. I knew that we had a really important archaeological site and we didn't want to make any mistakes. And we decided the place to start our excavations was not on the riverfront, where we knew we had hundreds of years of dense native history there. We decided to move back about a thousand feet from the riverfront and excavate an area that we thought would be simpler and perhaps even less important than the riverfront. And that area turned out to be the most important part of the site. We found evidence of a series of ditches, the earliest of which dates to the 1200s, the uh, latest of which dates to the 1300s. We found a house, a structure on the eastern side. And based on a lot of evidence associated with that structure, we strongly believe it actually was associated with Powhatan. It's the area that saw ceremonies. It's the area that saw the visitation from the Jamestown colonists. There's really nothing like that on any other site in Tidewater, Virginia. People think back to that early 1600s. Well, we've been here 400 years since that time, and our existence has been under threat. Many tribes have lost everything, yet we've continued to persevere, and we're at the point now with seven federally recognized tribes here in Virginia, we're able to step up. We're able to push the story of our continued existence and where we all want to go in the future. We've come to a point now where we have to heal that relationship between public lands and indigenous people because for centuries they were not allowed to be there on their own indigenous territory. Public lands and national parks were designated for new Americans and European Americans to sort of feel more connected to this new landscape. We know that public lands have an important story to tell. Their history is still continuing and we have to be responsible for storing these properties the way that indigenous people have for thousands of years and still know how to do. To be able to recapture designs that we lost, to be able to hold these tools in my hand and feel the spirit of the ancestors still there, to know that they use these things every day to take care of my people, it, it brings me back to those places. It, it connects me to my culture in a way that nothing else really can. I am proud that my ancestors were able to maintain our identity and our existence as a tribe through these centuries since contact with Europeans, uh, that we've maintained what we have of our land and of our culture, and I want to continue to build on that. We need to get back to who we are and let people see that, because it's a beautiful culture. We are unique as Virginia people, and for us to not be just something in a history book. We need to keep this alive. We need to keep this relevant today. We have an emblem of two bears. The larger bear is the present day and past ancestors. The younger, smaller bear is representation of the future generations, years and years from now. Whatever we're doing today will be carried on for the future. I'm trusting that the real story gets told. Knowing that most of the site is still there undiscovered, to me, is very, very exciting. I can guarantee you, over the next 100 years or more, there are gonna be remarkable discoveries out there that will continue to rewrite Virginia history.